So please welcome Robin, Robert, Harry, and Matt. Thank you. Hello, everyone. It's always a pleasure to come here uh, to speak to the chamber, uh, to give a little bit of an update of what uh, certain of the happenings in the city of Wadsworth. Uh, we certainly appreciate this opportunity, so thank you for having us. As we began to prepare our remarks for this, uh, this afternoon, we were remarking about how we have many multi-year projects that we've been working on over the years that uh, at the end of the day have a tremendous effect upon the, the citizens of Wadsworth. And so we thought uh, my remarks would be uh, to summarize some of these um, hallmark events that we've been uh, talking about, and then later on uh, you'll hear from my associates of some of the things that have been going on this past year. One of the first things that came to mind uh, for me was the community center. And I actually had not even taken office yet when discussions had been uh, started concerning this community center. I saw Dale Fortner over here somewhere, and he'll remember those meetings well. Uh, but bottom line is, is that uh, we had a, um, a situation where we were uh, thinking that it might be good to join forces. Uh, the issue basically was an aging community center, uh, and the high school also was aging, and also some of the elementaries. And the solution was is a collaborative effort, a unique collaborative effort between the schools, the city, uh, SUMA Health Systems, uh, the library, WCTV, our senior center, or the YMCA. And we all joined together, and it was a five-year process, a five-year um, uh, uh, event. And basically, we explored, designed, and eventually built the community center uh, campus uh, in conjunction with the high school. Uh, so four years later, where are we at today? Well, the YMCA has recently reported, I think you might have seen it in the paper, but they have over 10,000 members. Now think about that, and actually it's 10,600, but our, our uh, um, population is actually a little bit less than 22,000, so it's quite a, quite a penetration rate. Um, in the month of January, they had 35,000 swipes. And so those are individuals that are going there for activities. It's not um, somebody passively watching a basketball game or somebody watching their uh, swim lessons. It's actually those that are, are going to um, for some sort of activity. They are considered the busiest uh, YMCA in uh, the Akron area. Our senior center, uh, we have 3,600 members for the senior center. Once again, uh, think of our population. Uh, they actually track uh, participation as well, and they had 21,000 participants of some sort of program this past year. So once again, showing the activity level of that uh, area. So as you can see, that's a very, very um, uh, used uh, facility and one that's made a great uh, impact within the community. Next uh, thought that came to mind was um, our financial position throughout the year. And I, we titled this Weathered the Storm. Uh, when I took office in 2008, um, as many of you are aware, uh, 2008 was the beginning of, of our recession. And for municipalities, that lasted actually a little bit longer than, than uh, what was considered the, the rate for the rest of the year, the rest of the um, area. Um, but bottom line is, is, and I've reported this before, but we had a loss of, of revenue, um, a loss of local government funds, uh, elimination of the estate tax, but also a leveling of our income tax and other um, uh, other resources, and uh, so that was, um, was, was difficult on any municipality. And the solution was a team effort, uh, basically that was led by our finance team uh, in conjunction with the administration, uh, working with council, obviously also with all of our departments and our department heads, and we instituted a variety of policies and um, uh, situations so that we can monitor but also make a, a corrective action. Uh, we put into policy a, a, a put into place a, a cash reserve policy, also a comprehensive financial policy reporting. Uh, we have lean uh, operations. We tighten our belt. We add attrition, and at the end of the day, over these past nine years, I'm very happy to say that we've had a very solid budget, but also one that um, uh, we have good cash positions and so forth. Um, that also led to us being able to have, uh, for example. A, um, a certificate of excellence in financial reporting over the past eight years uh, running, as well as our bond rating, a standard and poor is, uh, is AA plus. That was um, 
uh, affirmed uh, recently uh, when we went out uh, to refinance our bonds for the uh, community center. <clears throat> And so that was uh, wonderful us, for us because we were actually able to save $1.2 million because of that. So that is, has been another kind of an issue that we've been dealing over the years but we're very proud of. Another thing that came to mind is infrastructure improvements. Um, over the years, um, we've had multiple multi-year uh, things that we've been dealing with. Uh, one of the ones that came to mind for me was our uh, water line. We had a 6.5 uh, mile water line that needed to be built uh, from Chippewa Creek and believe it or not that was a 15-year project and <clears throat> uh, from start to finish because we had to find the water and then uh, after we found it we had to go through many processes to have that come to fruition. Uh, we also televised our entire sewer, sanitary sewer system recently and uh, that was a multi-year project but once again uh, those um, the benefits from that will be uh, forthcoming in the years to come. Uh, obviously, we've talked about High Street. That's another multi-year project. The one I wanted to focus on was the, uh, the streets. And uh, the issue was is we were significantly behind in the maintenance of our streets. Uh, and every year, we just got more and more behind. And due to the generosity of the citizens, we had a 0.1% income, in income tax increase. And the, income, uh, the impact to that was great. Uh, what I have here is a picture of the streets that have been done in the last five years, and that's uh, 37.6 lane miles uh, over the past five years. So the impact has been great. Um, we were actually able to fund um, approximately $800,000 to a million dollars per year towards our streets. That's four times what we've been doing in the past. And so it's been a great impact, and I think that uh, it served our community well. Um, another one I thought it would be is technology. Um, we recognize the importance of access to technology uh, to our residents as well as our businesses and also the benefit that technology is as we deliver our services. And um, Wadsworth has been known actually for being progressive in technology and uh, secretly it's one of the things I, I kind of like to talk to other mayors about because they are always impressed by the level of service that we provide. Um, so we've had multiple multi-year projects uh, in the area of, of technology. Uh, the one that I thought I would focus on here is um, our automated meters, uh, the automated uh, electric, but we also have automated uh, water meters as well. And um, obviously these are read remote, remotely. Uh, they allow our residents to view and to manage their utilities. Uh, we're able to perform remote connections and disconnects. Uh, we're able to collect and then report real-time energy consumption. And we have a variety of energy efficient uh, programs that we're able to offer because of this. Um, with this automation, uh, it's provided great benefit to the citizens. And I wanted to mention one thing that I thought was pretty interesting, uh, for example, in our water. In 2016, we had 10 water services that we needed to shut off. And this was water that was just going full steam ahead um, that the residents were not aware of. And, and it, would, it would be either in a, a vacant home or perhaps uh, somebody that was snowbirding. Um, and they would not, we would not have detected that previously. And so we were able to shut off that water. And we estimated that we were able to save those residents $21,000 worth of lost water and sewer. Um, additionally, uh, and, and you think of that's just the water, but you know, think about the damage that would have been done to the home as well. Also in 2016, we tagged 800 homes that we detected that there was a slow leak of some sort, whether that's from a toilet or from you know, a hose that hadn't been turned off, that sort of thing. And because of that, uh, we were able to save our citizens $76,000 um, in the year 2016. And so adding those together and over the years, we've had the program going on for about five years, equals about a half a million dollars worth of savings just in water and sewer. So it's really a great benefit to the citizens. Um, lastly, I just wanted to real quickly, briefly mention um, our downtown. Uh, that's an in-progress multi-year pro uh, project and something that uh, I'm sure you've been reading the paper, but we've been having a lot of emphasis on that for the last couple of years. And it certainly will be something that we're focusing on in the future. Uh, Harry Stark's going to be talking about more of the specifics in that. But uh, it's really wonderful to, um, to see these projects that 
as I mentioned, they take a considerable amount of time and effort, and sometimes uh, it takes many years to be able to see them come to fruition, but uh, they're wonderful and they've been a, a true benefit to the citizens. At this time, I'm going to turn the time over to uh, our service director, Robert Patrick. Thank you very much, Mayor. Good afternoon. I think it's uh, undeniable the amount of progress that the city's made in the last 10 years. Hopefully you'll see that in the service department in 16, we continue that trend and then some highlights of things we want to accomplish in 17. But first off, I hope that my portion doesn't cause you any pain, emotional or physical, but at least if it does, you know who to contact. Jessica, welcome to the city of Wadsworth. I will be talking to you later. <clears throat> In 2016, uh, we continued to improve our electric distribution system in the form of the replacement of a large power transformer. This item, over $300,000, uh, was replaced at one of our substations. We're going to continue that in 2017 with two additional transformers elsewhere, and we were able to successfully negotiate pricing based on 2015 rates. We uh, completed a fantastic public-private um, collaboration project in the form of Park Center Commons, which many of you may have traveled to get here um, today. Um, you've seen the increase in the traffic around the area because of this project. You will soon see uh, some benefits on the development front with new businesses coming in, new offerings for all of you, for our residents. Um, new creation of jobs, and uh, continuing to strengthen our income tax base. If you didn't traverse that way to get here, you took High Street to get here, so you all are aware of the progress that was made in 2016 with this uh, $12.5 million construction portion. This was the largest single uh, road investment project in the city. It was part of the overall $19 million project, so I will talk more about what's going to happen in 2017 in a couple minutes, but the project was over 60% completed this last year due to the nice weather and the work of the contractor. As you've seen, the whole east side was completed and widened. The, many of the access roads were installed. <clears throat> we also made infrastructure improvements down at our airport. Uh, we have now the nicest runway in the state of Ohio after last fall's resurfacing of this one million dollar project of which we were able to receive 90 percent, excuse me, 95 percent funding through successful grants from the federal and the state levels. So we only had to make up the 5%. Many of you business owners have used the airport or else there's a lot of recreational users that really use this asset to our community. Uh, many of you are aware of our uh, wonderful public access channel and our studios that makes up WCTV. Many of you um, program uh, shows um, and direct shows. Also, maybe you advertise uh, to our over 4,000 subscribers um, through the production facility up there. We culminated the year uh, with record number of programming with our local Emmys as the Clappers. Many of you I see in this room were there. Uh, we had two Outstanding Achievement Award winners, Bill Adams and our own HR Director Jim Kovacs last year, so a fantastic event. Um, in our CityLink area, we also continued improvements. We were able to double the amount of bandwidth or data that we were able to provide to all of our subscribers. We also opened a customer service center down in the first uh, floor of City Hall, so our customer service representatives are able to be there to help you out better. And finally, our electric department continued their award-winning ways with a national recognition of a designation called an RP3 from the, uh, Amer uh, from the um, American Public Power Association. Uh, that was through a lengthy process, application process, recognized us as tops in the country as far as reliability, customer service, and safety. We also received a System Improvement Award through American Municipal Power, as well as a Safety Award. In 2017, we will continue those improvements in all our areas. Uh, we are completing the all-digital conversion here very soon at the CityLink uh, side, and we will continue making improvements that will help us to offer more bandwidth, faster internet speeds, also more HD channels and those types of things. Under the infrastructure elsewhere, as the mayor mentioned, our street improvement program this year will be almost $1 million. A couple highlighted streets will be 261, so from 94 all the way to Medina Light Road, that will be resurfaced. That is another almost million dollar project that our 
a 20% matching through ODOT will be accomplished through this program. <clears throat> that will uh, most likely happen in June or July. You can expect to see that work. Uh, we are going to undergo a large water line placement on Broad Street, over $500,000 repair between Lyman and Abel. That will be completed later this year in preparation of doing all the paving and resurfacing of Broad Street next year. The High Street Project, as I mentioned, you are all aware of. I wanted to give you some highlights this year. The winding on the west side will be completed. The contractor will start uh, when the weather turns, not this week, in a couple weeks, hopefully, around the 1st of April on the south side of that project. That's near West Street. Uh, they will work northbound then. Um, also with that winding is going to be the construction of a 10-foot multi-use path that is going to start at West Street and continue up across the bridge to Great Oaks Trail. Uh, as you can see here, and you've seen that bridge has really been widened last year. That wind is, widening is continuing on the west side, so that path will continue over the bridge. Uh, moving northbound, another key component this year will be the reconfiguration of Great Oaks Trail at 94. And so after this project, you will be looking directly with Park Center. So that'll line up, you'll be able to clearly go across. It'll also allow traffic to move in both east and westbound ways, really help out the movement of that intersection. Uh, and from there, the widening will continue north to Smoke Rise. Final uh, pavement will be placed and a center median will be put in most of the area. So you won't be able to make left turns except for at a signalized intersection will help out with the safety and the access of the area. So that is what to expect uh, this year. Uh, with over 16 operating areas, it's hard for me to mention each area, but if you ever wanna talk about municipal services, we can get together for lunch. Uh, don't worry, I program it so we talk about the sanitary sewer improvements after dessert. Uh, next up will be Harry Stark. You know him as the Economic Development Director and also the Assistant Service Director. to move all these. It's tough following somebody short. <clears throat> so uh, this is why you're all here, right? Listen to me, so uh, we'll get going. So economic development, what's economic development, right? So um, it's always a question I like to ask because everybody thinks economic development is just bringing businesses into a community. It's a lot more than that. It's, uh, it's bringing in business, it's keeping our current businesses, and it's really quality of life. If you wanted to, to paint a picture of economic development, it's everything in this community uh, that we have some kind of effect over. We've been blessed over the last several years to have a lot of manufacturing uh, growth in our community. Uh, we have a great tax base with our manufacturers. Uh, we have really good manufacturers. They really interact with the community, uh, collaborate. And uh, over the years, uh, they've, they've wanted to keep Wadsworth their home. And uh, we've seen uh, five major projects of expansions, over $6 million in new job growth just in the last couple of years. So uh, this year, uh, we have uh, Cornwell Tools, which is starting their project, which is in the top, top left. Yep, top left uh, of the screen. And uh, that project is on Corporate Parkway. They're building a brand new distribution center. So uh, that's, that's great and exciting for the city. And uh, some of those other pictures are projects from the year before in 2015, if you remember, we were number one in the county when it came to commercial, industrial, and residential construction. So, 2016 was a busy year for the mayor. As you can see, a lot of ribbon cuttings. Uh, we had a lot of great businesses uh, open up uh, commercial-wise in the community. Uh, we also had ribbon cutting for the, for the new airport runway and uh, the new road, Laverne, uh, which uh, Robert had uh, mentioned earlier. Uh, and then, uh, uh, groundbreaking ceremony at Suprema where they're also looking at doing an inspection, inspection project. So uh, a lot of good stuff going on in the community. I'm not going to bore you with more information on the 94th Street project. Um, my role in the 94th Street project is really uh, communication. So I was tasked with putting together a communication plan. And I think it worked very well last year. I worked, I, I met and my team met with all the businesses up in the corridor and uh, communicated with them on a routine basis, uh, weekly. Um, 
And I think it worked really well. I had uh, some great um, communication with uh, owners. Uh, they knew who to contact if they had questions. Uh, we were able to uh, uh, do shows on, on Wadsworth Radio and, and the WCTV uh, show, which a lot of people uh, really watched, which was surprising to me. But um, uh, we actually uh, keep getting asked when we're going to do our next show, so uh, soon. But uh, you know that was always good to kind of give an update as to what's happening with the project. So one of the things we try to do is, um, one of my roles is to help market the community and help um, retain our businesses. So uh, you know, 80, 80 to 85 percent of all new growth in a community comes from within. And a BR and E stands for business retention and expansion. And the mayor, uh, myself, and uh, Kathy Brighton Butcher from Medina County Economic Development Corporation, uh, we go out and meet with businesses on a routine basis. We met with over, I think, 50 last year. And uh, it's a great opportunity for us to, to sit down, talk, uh, talk about, hear about their challenges, hear about their, all the positives that's going on with them, and, and what can the city do to assist them. So uh, that's usually where we uh, first hear about any type of uh, thoughts about business expansion projects, and then I kind of work with them through that process. Uh, so it's a great opportunity. Site selection is very important. Um, a lot of manufacturers use site selectors to find locations for them uh, in, the, in the United States. I had the opportunity to meet with uh, eight site selectors last year, one-on-one, -on -one, and it was a great opportunity to sell our city to them and provide them a lot of information. Uh, trade shows, uh, that's a great picture of me there, but um, trade shows, <laughs> I was being facetious. Um, trade shows are also great because you get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with um, actual, more on the commercial end, uh, but it's, it's really good interaction, get, give them a lot of information. You can follow up with them afterwards too, so well, that works good. And then, of course, marketing. Uh, social media has uh, really become a uh, you know, the way of the world, same thing in economic development. Uh, so I dabble a little bit in social media. I'm not an expert, as some people are, uh, but I'll be talking about that in a minute. Uh, but also, you know, putting ads in the papers and doing as whatever you can to market the community. So in 2017, um, you know, what are we doing? So, you know, it's really why Wadsworth. Why? We all know how great of a city this is, right? I mean, a lot of you do business here, um, and it's a great place to be. So how do we market the community? So one of the things uh, is uh, first our website, right? Uh, the city's website is terrible, uh, no offense to, to administration. But we're actually going through, we're actually going through a uh, redevelopment of the website. Um, because I said how terrible it was, I was put in charge of that project. So uh, no, never do that, right? Um, but no, so uh, we're going th forward with a new website design. Uh, we have over 2,000 pages uh, on our website, which is immense. And uh, so we're working with the company um, to redesign the entire website, and it's going very well. Uh, the new website will launch later this year, and that'll be, it's going to market this city a lot better than what our current site is, plus make it as user-friendly as possible. Tax abatements, you know, we continue to look at our tax abatements and our incentive programs that we can offer for uh, manufacturers and, and what else uh, can we do to, to bring communities, uh, businesses here or retain businesses. Uh, demographics, demographics is extremely important for, as you know, in business plans, right? What, it, what is the uh, demographics of an area? Why should we bring our business to the city? So we're constantly looking at that and, and trying to, excuse me, uh, show the positives, you know, uh, for those businesses. And of course, marketing again. Branding, marketing, all of that is important. Uh, I'm in the process of hiring a part-time uh, economic development assistant um, who is going to um, have a marketing uh, communications degree, and we're really going to put a strong effort in uh, marketing the community in a, in a different way than we've done in the past. So that person should be on board in March. And speaking of uh, branding, uh, you know, what is the city of Wadsworth? And who are we? And, and how do we market ourselves as a community? So we're going to be looking at creating a city brand. We are 
I think, way behind in doing that. And so we are um, going to be working with a, a firm to help develop a market or a branding um, campaign for the city, as well as a brand for our downtown. That'll include wayfinding signage and uh, all of the good information that uh, people want to see, right, when we market. Downtown Wadsworth, right? So we are in the process of revitalizing our downtown. Uh, we went through a, a, a year-long process of creating a downtown plan. Uh, we had a lot of partners in that, the, the Chamber, uh, Main Street Wadsworth, uh, were key partners in the development of that plan. And uh, that was uh, adopted by council uh, several weeks ago. And this year we're going to start looking at implementing uh, portions of that plan. And uh, I think it's a great opportunity for us to have a tool uh, to utilize when looking at redeveloping the downtown. Uh, because let's face it, the downtown is very important and uh, for any community. And uh, we have a great downtown, but it can be better, right? So some of the things we're looking at doing is benches. If you've noticed, we have all new benches in the downtown. Um, we've gotten a lot of compliments on those. The old ones, uh, the wooden ones, were kind of falling apart. Uh, Parks Department did a great job in uh, upkeep, but we have uh, new uh, uh, black wrought iron uh, benches that look great. We're going to be putting up Edison lights in some of the alleys, as in the top uh, picture, just to try to get more of an atmosphere in the downtown. With the new microbrewery that opened downtown and a lot of activity in the downtown, the Chinese restaurant that's coming in down there, I think uh, there's a lot of good things happening in the downtown. We need to, as a city, um, showcase what we have. Uh, also with the downtown, uh, the city enacted a facade improvement program last year, uh, which was a pilot project. Uh, we had $50,000 that we um, did uh, cost match with uh, uh, businesses in the downtown doing some facade improvements. Uh, we have, I think, $3,000 left out of that, so a lot of uh, businesses took advantage of that. And then we were very fortunate to receive a revitalization grant uh, from the uh, state of Ohio for uh, $300,000. So uh, that project is just moving forward for additional uh, facade and, and uh, building improvements in the downtown. And of course, the trail. A year ago, I talked to you all about the trail, the interurban multipurpose trail going from downtown to our uh, easternmost border. Uh, eventually, it'll link up to the towpath. Um, we hit a snag last year with First Energy. Uh, but uh, we finally have the approval from First Energy, and we're moving forward uh, with construction of the trail. So construction, we, will, we are hoping to start uh, towards the later part of March um, as the weather cooperates. But, uh, it's going to be a, a great uh, connection of the downtown um, to other parts of the, of the community. So um, that is all I have. Um, Matt Hiscock really doesn't need an introduction. Uh, everybody knows Matt. Uh, but Matt is our safety director. And uh, thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. I recognize most of the faces in the room. For those of you who uh, I do not, my name is Matt Hiscock, and I am the Director of Public Safety for the City of Wadsworth. Oftentimes, I'm asked, what does that really mean, Matt? And essentially, it means I am the city administrator uh, in charge of the police, fire, and EMS divisions of the city. Um, with that, I think it's only important that I start my discussion with a public service announcement.